Hi friend, David here from Learn Christmas Lighting. I hope you are well today. Today I want to talk about value curves. We're in a series here about some of my top tips of X lights, just things that are in X lights that um, I wish I knew when I was getting started and they're kind of next level things like if you're just beginning this you probably don't want to look at this stuff um, just stick with the simple uh, sequencing and in the future if you want to get deeper with sequencing come back and check out these tips but for those who have been sequencing for a minute maybe you've gotten uh, some stuff under your your belt etc etc um, now it's time to take it to the next level and one of those ways that you can take it to the next level is with what we call value curves. And so I was just looking through this sequence here from my show last year, and I've got two segments here that could really use a value curve. One is this section, and another is this section. So both of these sections are crescendos in the music, areas where, and for copyright reasons, I'm just not going to play the music here. Um, so areas where the music, you know, starts slower and it gets faster, particularly the second one. And so if I run some X lights effects across it, just as an example here, you know, I've got this nice chasing single strand and I've got this uh, butterfly in the windows. I've got a VU meter. And the only thing that's really reacting to the music and really increasing as the music increases is the VU meter here. Um, but what if I wanted to make some of these other ones increase in speed as they get going? Well, there's a couple ways I could do that. One, I could go in here and I could chop it up, right? I could I could take it, you know, shorter and then make a second one and a third one and a fourth one. And for this one, we'll go the speed on the spirals type effect is the uh, palette repetition. And so there it's once, it's still kind of fast. And then it's twice. So maybe we make them twice as long there, it's three times. There, it's four times. And so if we play that back, sure. You know, as we go through those, it's going to speed up. Um, but it's kind of choppy in the sense that it's, it's generating that faster speed, you know, each measure. And so let's undo that and find a better way. Uh, the better way is value curves. So anytime in X lights, if you're sequencing and you see this green arrow, this kind of U-turn arrow, as I call it, that's a value curve. And if we hit that arrow, we get this here. Now, you don't have to be intimidated. This is actually really simple. And so the value curve is shows you here across the number of uh, timings, actually, here that are here, um, what the value does for this particular level. So first of all, we're looking at the palette repetition, which we'd looked at before, and it's starting at uh, about three here. Yep, the level of three. So to start, we can bring it where we want to bring it. Maybe we start at level one. And then there's a number of different curves in here that you can choose, okay? Like there's a ramp where it starts slow and it gets way fast by the end. Um, there are exponential ones. And so for quick, for a quick curve, you know, something's uh, speeding up, slowing down, a bit of both, you can really quickly drag, grab one of these in here. Um, and you can also modify them too. So say we just grab this ramp, actually, let's show you what that looks like. Okay. So we press OK. Then we go ahead and play it. We see it's slow. And as we go along, it starts speeding up that speed until it's even faster, 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 faster at the end. Okay. We can also modify this. So say we want to be a little more subtle. The little red dots at the end allow us to customize it. Now we need to go to the custom one and then we can just drag our little red dots. If you miss it, if you click on it again, it will create another one, but you can just click on it and delete it. And so say, for example, we wanted to go from like two to four instead of one to five, right? Um, then we can do that. There's a reverse and flip that allow us to, to change that around. You can add in the middle here as many points as, as you want. Like if we just make it absurd, you know, we could we could do something like this. Make a Charlie Brown's T-shirt. Press OK. And then we're going to see that reflected as we play back. So it's slow, it speeds up, it slows down, it speeds up, it slows down. 
Um, and a value curve is going to work on anything. That's the cool thing here. So anytime you've got like a change in the music, you can add a value curve in. So say we set the, the repetition to three, but then we're going to modify the uh, spiral wraps. Okay. So that's like basically the number of spirals, right? If I drag this high, it gets uh, very detailed. If I drag this low, it's, it's not, or actually that's negative. Um, so on this one, it's, it's near zero where once it renders it's a very low amount of spiral wraps right um it's it's lower detail so we could go in here and we could create you know there are music trigger ones as well which are pretty cool uh, but we do an exponential up and so now as we get near the end of this it starts really increasing the only warning with um things like that spiral wrap control let's render it make sure it's up to date is that um sometimes it can be a little jumpy as the curves increasing so you got to watch out for that where it's adding more spiral wraps in and the only way to do that is to kind of jump between them and so you do have to watch out for that um but it's fun to play with um well it's getting much more intense here you see that so it really starts moving it's a way to add some activity or slow down real quick um so this one especially, the value curves can be placed on pretty much any parameter, right? Not everything, like here the, the VU meter, the bars, it's not going to let me do it there. Um, but pretty much any parameter in here is going to have that enabled. And then you can make a value curve that works for your music. It's going to make it, it's just one of those next level things where it's going to make your show look a lot more complex. And it only takes you a few clicks. Now, is everybody going to notice it? No. But maybe your friend who's a musician who, who really gets into this, you know, he might get really into it, he or she, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, the kids are still going to dance just as hard when they see your display, right? So like I say with anything, these are quick tips. I hope you enjoy them. Let me know below in the comments if you did. And if you are new to this, you want to go over to LearnChristmasLighting.com and get my free guide. It's the three things I wish I knew before I bought any Christmas lighting. It's going to help you save uh, mistakes, not have, not buy anything that uh, you don't need. That was a double negative. And um, ultimately, save money, save stress as you get into this hobby. Have a great day, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.